I wanted to create something that, you know, underground lovers could see underground acts, you know, get to know them more and see them in an intimate setting, you know, more stripped down performance. Um, so without that, without further ado, introducing Carrie Foe. Give it up for her, y'all. There you go. Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing? Yes, yes. So, Carrie, thank you for doing this. No, I really appreciate for, it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you've been in New York for like a week now, right? Yeah. Celebrated a birthday, the big 2-5. Yeah. Give it up for her, y'all. Where are my Gemini's at? Yeah, I know y'all out there. Everybody else y'all hating. Oh, we hating on, <laughs> oh, we hating on Gemini's. We, we're great. <laughs> You know, so tell us about the party. You know, I threw it. I think it was, you know, a fantastic job. But um, it was great. It was, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. I feel like everybody that was there felt like it was their birthday. Like that's how lit it was. Um, and yeah, I was just, I enjoyed myself. It reminded me of the parties back home because where I'm from, there's no industry. So everybody got their hands on the floor, their feet on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's just enjoying themselves and not necessarily worried about you know, how they look or whatever. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about, you know, just enjoying yourself and living your best life and not being concerned about um, if you fit into anything or like, are you cool? Cause that, that shit don't matter, man. Like we all gonna die one day and so enjoy your life. That's how I feel. You know, and to piggyback off of you mentioning, you know, where you're from, which is Little Rock, Arkansas or whatever. Um, I want to tell a story on how I even came across you. Like, I remember I was still editor at St. Huron and I got an email, it was a whole project, but no small talk was the standout. I think you had just dropped the video. And then, you know, I had to find an image to go with the post. And I'm like, damn, this girl remind me of myself. You know, she dark skin, fly as hell and all kinds of stuff, you know, <laughs> different hairstyles and all that kind of stuff or whatever. I'm like, you know, I really relate to her. How does a girl from Little Rock just, you know, end up so cultured and so different and, you know, Something like that. Uh, honestly, television. Lots and lots of television. I watched a lot of TV when I was a kid. Um, and I just saw, like, Missy Elliott being fucking fly as fuck, you know? And, like, seeing, like, Destiny's Child and just seeing what they're doing and being like, oh, my God, like, these girls are, like, amazing. I wish that I could do that or whatever. Like, even as a kid, like, I knew I wanted to travel and I wanted to meet different kinds of people. And I always knew that I was, I always knew I wasn't gonna be in Little Rock. I didn't know that I was gonna be doing music. So music just kind of like happened. And so everything that I kind of wanted as a kid. Well, tell us that story, how did it happen? Um, so with music, I had always been writing like poetry and I had been um, like drawing and stuff like that. And uh, I, when I was like 16 years old and I had like a group of uh, friends that used to record in their closet. And I went over there and they were like, no, nah, you gotta rap. Like, you, you look like you can rap. Like, you gotta rap. So, go home, write a 16, come back, record that shit. I was like, okay, all right, cool. Cause they were some hood niggas, y'all. That was what it was. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> all right, I'll be How back. How old were you? I was 16. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of, okay, I'm gonna do it. Went home and uh, I rapped over at Jay Z's uh, song Cry. Cause I just look, I love that shit. So, I did that and me and my best friend, we went over there and we recorded it and we put it on Facebook. And like people were like, oh, okay, cool. And it was just like became a thing that I just did as a hobby. And then when I turned 19, I started to like take it seriously and I just never stopped since then. How did the internet play a part in that? Cause I could only imagine, you say TV was a big influence in like- Oh yeah, the internet for sure. Um, especially like when Twitter uh, became a thing. Cause for me, like Facebook was a very local thing. Like, Facebook was how you got your friends at school to hear your music, but Twitter was how you got people that lived in a hundred mile radius to hear your music, and you know what I mean? So I connected with so many people from like Memphis and Atlanta, and I even moved to Atlanta a couple times to like try to make it happen. So I definitely like big up the internet for real. Like I know we all be like, damn man, the internet man, it's some crazy shit on there, but it's also a good tool if you really wanna connect with people and like make your shit happen. 
So would you say what was like the first thing to like catch on where you know like, oh, this is possibly like serious or whatever? Would you say what, that was no small talk or even, because even before that you were just dropping stuff on SoundCloud. Yeah, I was, I was just putting stuff out, but no, when I made Laugh Now, Die Later, I bullshit you not, and like a lot of, most, well, nobody really knows this, but I was like, I'm putting this shit out, and if it don't work out, I'm, fuck this. Like, I'm just gonna go be a bank teller, or I'm gonna, you know, I'm like, I'm like, where I've been doing, I had been doing it for like, probably about four years at the time, and I was just like, it's just not gonna happen, because I'm from Arkansas, and nobody cares what I gotta say, like, you know, like, it's just like, whatever. So, um, I put out, I, I, when I made Laugh Now, Die Later, I was like, Damn, this shit is fire. Let me just put it out. I put it out, and then it just like happened. Like instantly, people were like, "Oh my god, no small talk." This shit is, oh goddamn, like you know. And even like the the deep cuts, <laughs> like people fuck with it. So I was just really excited that people liked it. You know, and I'm gonna definitely come back to no small talk. But you mentioned goddamn. You know, if you go on SoundCloud, the plays you got more plays for goddamn than you do uh, no small talk. Big facts, right? And Big you facts. actually produced that. Or whatever. Talk about like producing and then all the other sounds of like production on that left uh, left later. Okay, so um, project. Um, I'm very self conscious when it comes to like producing and stuff, because like at first I was very like, I was very like, okay, cool, I'm doing this, and then I started like getting around like real producers, and I was like, oh shit, I really don't know what I'm doing. So um, so like now I'm I'm kind of like taking a backseat to producing, and I'm like. I'm like doing the drums most of the time. Like I'm really good at drum programming. Like I love making like drum patterns. And then I'll like go in somebody who can play keys or that, you know, is just better at that kind of stuff, like melodies and stuff. And I have them like add that to it. So it's like now I'm learning like how they work. Like I've been working with Matt Martians. I don't know if you guys are familiar. The, the internet. Boy. But um, Super three. Yeah, he's like teaching me a lot of stuff about melodies and stuff like that. So. I'm just trying to get better as a producer, but it, I mean, I love it, it's fun. But I really, I really like writing songs and I really want to write for more people, so. And we are gonna get into all that too, cause you have been doing that already. But even, you know, to get no small talk out the way, you know, I would say that was the one song that was being played in parties down here and maybe in other cities. And then of course, Childish Gambino jumped on it. Now I know you guys shared the same management, so that's probably, you know, that probably played a part, but you know, do you remember him first reacting to the record when he heard it on his own, or like, how did that all happen? Um, so basically how it happened was um, a fam who was my manager at the time, he, um, he found it on SoundCloud, and he reached out to a Black Party, which is Malik, um, who helped me like make the song. He reached out to him and was like, yo, this song is crazy, like, like Gambino wants to remix it, and I'm just like, and at first, like, and he'll tell you, like, I was very not fucking with it. I was just like, I was like, I don't know about these people, like, they're industry people. Like, I'm from Arkansas. I don't trust, like, none of this. I don't know what this is. And so um, I think that's what attracted them to me more because I wasn't, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't, like, hype. I was like, okay, all right, let's just keep the conversation going. Like, let's hang out more and da-da-da. And then so it, it kind of, like, I hung out with them and it felt very good. Like, those are, like, my dudes. They look out for me. Like, I go to L.A., I need a place to stay. They got me, you know what I mean? Like, advice, they got me. Yeah. So it's like, it's like having, like, a group of older men who just look out for my best interests. And so, yeah, that's how it happened. And it must be serious because he did a video for it. Like, I don't, you know, as big as he is, he don't got to do nothing like that. No, so. yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. he definitely, he gives me a lot of good advice. And and me too. Like, I get, like, he, he asked me what's cool, what's hot, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's, it's a very, like, good relationship. I mean, that's probably why you're on his project, Awaken My Love, which is, you know... Uh, such a great album for our generation right now. Uh, yeah, I know you probably told this story thousands of times, but like, how do you end up being one of the only like people credited on that project? You know, um, because when he was making that album, I was I had already moved back to Little Rock from LA, but I was whenever I would go to LA, I would be staying in the house where they were making the uh, the album because all of royalty was staying in this house, and we called it the factory. And so um, he was just like. He had the band in there. They're all like making music and stuff. And I remember one day, and like we all like like we we would share music and stuff. So I would you know show him stuff. He would show me stuff. 
And um, he called me in there and was like, hey, come like come in the room. Like, all right, cool. So he's like playing songs and he's just like, um, I want you on this. Like, go in there and record. Like, he had already like written what he wanted me to say. So I just went in and I did it. And he was like, perfect. All right, cool. And I was like, all right, that was cool. Did he ever tell you what his reason was for picking you? Or was it like the sound of your voice or like? Oh uh, yeah, I just think I think he just dig my voice, which a lot of people do, which is weird because I think my voice is weird. But and, and speaking of your voice, like I know, like um, you know, I I can't lie, only because you were a female and like there wasn't many new females that came out from the south. I'm like, oh man, you know, I felt like a little uh, gangsta boo or even like mm -hmm. a little Mia X, you know, just something mm -hmm. or whatever. But like. You know, how you know how annoying is it when people like try to compare you to like just the next southern chick that was out? Like who you've been compared to and stuff like that. And how um, do you feel about it? Well, my thing is I'm like it's cool because like of course people are going to compare you cuz they they need to make sense of what you are. Like you know, like people need to do that. Um but I mean at first it was annoying, but I mean I, it's not really that annoying because like I do like like Gangsta Boo and LeChat and Mia X, you know, all those people. But um, I feel like when people do that, it's like, it's a little lazy, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, like even the other day when we were speaking with, um, with Todd, he was like, he heard no small talk. He was like, that's Gucci's flow. And I was like, yeah, that's Gucci's flow. Nobody understood that that was Gucci man's flow from like that 08, 09 era. That's Gucci. I'm like, I listen, you know, so it's just like, if you're act, if you're actually like aware, you'll know, but otherwise you're like, oh, she sounds like whatever. And I'm like, okay, you and don't even, get it. Even to talk about Gucci, man, you know how like this generation tries to be like, oh, we so hype on Gucci and, yeah. it's, and it sucks that they don't even point that out. Yeah, like, nah, like people... People ain't, they not real Gucci fans. And that was like the prime Gucci. That's the prime, man, because the movie, y'all, let me tell you. Man. How many of y'all know the movie out there? The Gucci movie? Man? Clap, I mean, no? Oh, so I didn't want to stay in my bachelor pad. Wanna slow dance in my mansion. Shawty want to stay in my bachelor pad, but I'm a bachelor and I'm happy. Hey. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's annoying to me too. Like even, of course, females out today, they always get compared to something. But you know, even more, you know, of course, so you're influenced by Gucci Man. But like, what else? You know, how was it for you growing up? You know, what I'm saying because I know, of course, we have influence from media, whether it be the internet and all that stuff. But like, I would like to say I'm a fellow weird black female or whatever. And you know, we joke around and say how we aunties and stuff like that. Like, what do you think? I mean, maybe particular to like young dark skinned females, like what did you go through to kind of maybe make you who you are today? Not even just the bad, but you know, just all that. Um, I mean, honestly, um, like I I could hang when I was younger, I I was definitely weird. I was socially awkward because I felt like I could fit in with everybody, but also I didn't fit in with everybody. So it was like, um, like I was the kind of person when my mom would try to put me on cheerleading with a bunch of girly girls. And I would be listening to like country, all this rap music, and I'm just like singing all this shit, and they're just looking at me like, what? Like, what? Is, like, what's wrong with her? So it just at, at a point in time, I was just like, you know what? I'm just who I am, and I'm gonna just be that. You know what I mean? Like, and definitely like me being, I was I was unattractive when I was coming, like growing up and stuff. I was like the unattractive girl. I was really skinny. I was dark skinned. I didn't have like the newest anything because my mom was like, we go into the yard sale down the street and that's where you're gonna get all of your clothes. Like I couldn't get any of the things that I wanted so I always got like made fun of for like, you know, not having the fresh um, stuff. So um, I had to be funny and I had to be witty and I had to be creative to keep people from being on my ass all the time. Like talking shit about me and I had I had to like have quick comebacks and be spicy and feisty or whatever you know what I mean because once once a dude's like saying something crazy and you say something about his hairline in front of all his homies they like damn bro she got you like damn like damn you know what I mean like so that's what I had to be on and that's that's kind of how because I, I was always the home girl and so dudes always out used to crack on me I'm like nah man we're not doing this no more like be at the boys and girls club making me cry like <laughs> But it, it's it's cool, and, and I feel like that's how, how I got, like, my sense of humor. And you can hear it in my music that I'm very, like, 
tongue in cheek and it's a lot of satire and stuff. So yeah. And you know, me personally dealing with you for the last week or whatever, you know, which has been fun, girl. Would have missed you. <laughs> but you know, I didn't know you were actually adopted, and that was very interesting because, of course, you know, I've had an interesting upbringing and stuff like that. But I'm like, okay, now I know that definitely played a part with you being who you are today. Like, how was that for you? Yeah. So I was, um, I was adopted, but I was adopted when I was like one month old. So pretty much, I've like been with my family my whole life, and. Um, so when I turned 19, I found like my mom and my, I found out who my mom and dad were and stuff. And like my dad, my dad, my mom was like, do you wanna know who your daddy is? And I'm like, yeah girl, like tell me. And so he ended up being this local rap, he was like one of the most famous local rappers from Little Rock, which was so fucking crazy. Like, like it, it was like, I, I remember singing his songs in the early 2000s, like me and my cousins, like, Crush this, crush that, everything crushed. It was, it was, it was clean. And, and when I found out, I was like, oh damn, like I'm literally like this man's jeans. And he was an artist. He liked to, he actually painted a giant mural um, at his school. And I just thought that was so cool. I'm like, damn, like, okay, it's weird. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever thought about like reconnecting with them if you haven't already? Um. I think my mom lives in Nebraska, and my dad, I've talked on the phone with him a few times or whatever, and he always, like, sends me Facebook messages telling me how proud of me he is, so I think that's really cool. That's cool. So would you say, I guess, you you lived in Arkansas your whole life, so mm -hmm. when you moved to L.A. to make Lost in, L in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. was that the first time you moved out of the city? Oh, out of no, no, I, I lived in Atlanta a couple times, which, I mean, Atlanta is, like, it's not that big of a culture shock. But when I moved to LA, I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. like Tell what? us about that. It was it was just crazy because I'm I don't know, I'm just used to the same kind of landscape and the same kind of like people, same kind of music, and then I go out there and it's just like a whole new world. And um so yeah, like at first I like, I, I didn't know how I felt, like most of the time I just didn't know how I felt about it. I was like, oh, okay, I like it. And I was like, oh, I don't like it. Like, oh, I like it. It's like, oh, I don't like it. So it's just, it just went back and forth um, so much that, I mean, now I enjoy it because I go there to work. And I like, I don't try to party because LA is not like a party place. You go to work. So yeah. Well, how long were you staying there? I lived there for a year. For a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the whole inspiration for your last project. Would you say? Mm -hmm. No, no, and I made a fire ass album yeah. out of that experience. Like, mm -hmm. I definitely don't regret any of it because it definitely shaped me to be the way that I am today. And um, so, yeah, I'm like, I'm glad I got to experience it. Are there any things about LA that, you know, like facts or things, you know, stigmas or whatever that are true based, like, you know, the people or this or this I mean, and that? I mean, I feel like there's whatever kind of people everywhere you go. But it's definitely, um, it's just like Hollywood. Like, it's exactly what you think Hollywood is. It's, it's an industry city. It's people trying to be stars. So it's like, and I'm not into it. I don't know if you can tell. I mean, I love all of y'all, but I'm like, when, when people are like on me, I'm like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. And it's like, some people feed off of that, but I definitely need like my space and stuff. So when I got out there, it, I was just like, oh, this is like, this is it. Like these are social climbers and like, they're trying to make it happen, which I, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Do what you gotta do to make it happen. But I was like, this ain't for me. If I recall, I remember you saying like you choose to stay in Arkansas. Like, of course, you can move to New York, you could go back to LA, but you choose to live there. Yeah. And why is that? My family. And it's just a, I can, like, I'm country as fuck. And I like, my words, they run together. Sometimes you can't understand what the hell I'm saying. And, but people there, they understand me and they get it. And, um, and I live with my parents. I live like, and all my nieces and nephews, they're staying with us for like the summer. So I have all these kids running around and you know, I get to watch them grow up and they get to see me growing up as well. Cause, and they're very supportive. Like my nephew plays my videos on the TV all the time. It's, it's so annoying. It's, it's, like, it's like, please stop. But you know, like, and it, it feels good. Like I'm trying to like be the glue for my family and like, 
um, now that I'm un now that I understand like the dynamic of what my family is because we are we weren't all super close and now I'm like my mom the other day she was like I, I was crying I was like you know do you want me to not be so vocal about the things that we need to change about our family and she's like no don't don't give up on us like please like you are my biggest blessing and it's okay girl like to me that's the most important thing. Like all of this is cool, but like I just I just want to be there for like you know the people that like have always been there for me. And I can honestly say you could stay there because if I'm not mistaken, like the insecure soundtrack. Weren't you home when all that happened? Or um, yeah, 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 I was back and forth. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like you know you don't even have to be in a major city for um, bomb ass shit. Yeah, to I know I don't. Like because I, I fly so much now. Because <laughs> if y'all don't know, she was one of the feature artists on Issa Rae's Insecure soundtrack. Like, give it up for her, y'all. Like, she had so many songs. Not one, not two. It was a few songs, and then gave him another exclusive track. Like that was so crazy. And like for me, it was crazy to see that because you know. I got put on like a few years ago, and it's like, well, damn, this bitch still coming, and it's still no small talk that's like running it. It's like crazy. So, you know, tell us more about that, because that's a major blessing. Um, so Issa Rae, um, I met, I guess, I guess like the internet. So when Stone, when the whole Stone Mountain thing happened, she was like, oh my god, like I feel like you're me, and I'm like, oh my god, I feel like you're me, because like, I used to watch like Awkward Black Girl, and um, and you know, she would rap in the show, and I just thought it was so funny. So. Um, she was like, yo, I'm listening to your album in the office. I can't stop playing it. Like, come down here now. Like, let's talk about, let's just talk. So like, I get there, and um, she's like, yeah, we want to use, like, three of the songs from your album. I'm like, okay. I'm like, cool. And then later she was like, okay, we have this one scene, and we just really want you to, like, make a song for it. And I was like, I've never done this before, but okay, cool. Like, let's, let's do it. So she sent me the scene. And I was like, oh, cool, like, I can make a song out of this scene. And it was it was really cool, because, um, like, when I was a kid, me and my cousins used to ride in the back of the car and, like, sing, like, I can make a song out of anything. I can make a song out of anything. Name something. And we would just make a, we would say something, and we'd make a song out of it. So it was, like, it was kind of like my childhood coming back, like, full circle, being like, yeah, you're now making songs about about anything. Like, you're getting the opportunity to make songs. So I just thought it was really dope. I mean, okay, so it's tight. You're making songs for TV, but mm -hmm. like, have you ever thought about you being on a big screen? You know, whether movies or TV? For sure, man. I think I'm pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. Do y'all think I'm cool enough to be on TV? <laughs> what would be the um, ideal situation if you could like have something tomorrow? Um, Honestly, like, I think it would be cool if I got to like do something scripted. I really want to do something scripted, like with a role, like not me playing Carrie Fo. Like I play Carrie Fo every day. I want to like have a role and like have to like figure out who the character is and their background and their mannerisms. Like I want to do all of that. So hopefully one day, you know. But maybe I don't know. Maybe I could write my own shit. Yeah. I see why not. Yeah. I mean, all my friends tell me I could do it, so. Maybe. You could do anything. I could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, aside from, you know, having many gifts, you know, one thing that I recently found out, you're actually like a visual artist yeah, to a certain degree. Do you like, so what type of art? Do you like sketch or like draw? Um, it's, I'm really, I'm really just doodle. Like, you doodle, that's what I just doodle. Um, and I really like drawing like font, different fonts and stuff. Um, and then like, I do like paper weaving. So I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I or remember like middle school. No, not I mean kindergarten. Yeah, like no, yeah. Basket. So, so I found <laughs> I found all my portfolios from when I was like in elementary school, and I had did so many paper weavings, and they were fire. I was like, damn, like let me like do this now, you know what I mean? And so I started doing it, and I was making all these patterns that were just really, really cool. So like I was like, I don't know, like maybe this could be fabric or you know just something like that. And so eventually I'll be confident enough to like put my art out there, but I'm just so self-conscious because I don't have one style. Like I switch up like all the time and I don't really know what my style is. And my artist friends are like, no, you just you just keep trying different things. And I'm like, well, you guys have a style and it's so cool. So yeah. So I mean, I know things, but is there any like new creative 
things you're doing right now, whether you're working with certain artists and stuff like stuff like that, you know, like, you know, it, who are you working with right now? Or, I mean, I guess you could talk about working with Matt, you know, because uh, yeah. you guys release projects. Yeah, I mean, so um, once again, Matt Martians, shout out to Matt Martians. Um, we've been working together, and even Pat, like Patrick from the internet, um, and even like Steve, We've been like just doing stuff. I've been just hanging out, and honestly, like they're my friends. I spend, I hang out with them more than I actually make music with them. So, I think that's a really good sign that I like them as people. And Y'all so, met on tour, right? Mm, well, no, I I just All right, but, I just being, go to their shows. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. I just, I just go to their shows. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been working on new music, and like Matt's been definitely like. Um, helping me and me watching him make mu make his own music has been very inspiring and Steve as well like they're so talented and they're so like helpful you know what I mean like they're very helpful so um my sound is like it's switching up a little bit and but. you know I'm about to ask about that how do you think people I mean you already been dropping music with Matt already where mm -hmm. you can see is a very more progressive sound mm -hmm. how do you describe that like what what phase or what are you going through right now for that type of sonic to come out honestly I'm I'm just fucking with myself again like now that I'm back at home I'm like oh no I'm back in my element um because with Lost in Los Angeles like the music was good but I was definitely not in my element and I was trying to like do what I was seeing everybody else do. And so like now that I'm back home, like I feel more like me and the sounds are like weird, but I'm like rapping, but then I'm also like singing and I'm singing rapping. And now I call myself a rap singer because I write my raps and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just sing this shit because it sounds cooler when I sing it. So yeah. And you know, I, nobody really, um, like the New Day rappers that are out right now, you know, they're more melodic and all that kind of stuff. And you could kind of say they're like rap singers too, but of course nobody says rap singer. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, how do you feel? Like, I, it's clear as day on, on how you guys are different, but how do you feel about the new class of like rap artists out right now that kind of do, not the same thing, because of course it's different, but you know, kind of do the rap singing I mean, thing too. I mean, I like it. I mean, honestly, like, I love Lil Uzi Vert, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Lil Uzi yeah. Vert is so great. Like, it's, oh, his, his melodies are just, so good like I wish he just had a live band yeah. like for real because he's so good I think it's coming and he's yeah yeah no he's like he's like literally a rock star you know how everybody's like I'm a rock star like no Lil Uzi Vert is a rock star for real um but no I really I mean I like where everything is going even I mean even with just like R&B um like the new soul is like hot like I love everything right now like I think everybody's being honest like even like the Kendrick, the mm -hmm. the SZA out like the SZA album's fucking crazy. <laughs> She's like being very honest, and I fuck with that. So yeah. Would you say R and B is at a better place than hip hop is right now? I think it's kind of been making a comeback. Yeah, no, for right. sure. Cause for a minute, nobody was singing for the girls. Like we, it's like dudes were singing to other dudes about how they <laughs> about how they didn't like women. Oh, true. It was like, dudes was like, oh, fuck that bitch. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? This does not make me moist, bro. Like, stop. <laughs> like, what? What are we doing? <laughs> and it's like, you, you playing that, and you think you're turning me off, but I'm like, you are, like, crazy. No. Well, I mean, I think we covered everything for the most part, you know. I was going to just ask next, you know, um, you know, what do you have coming up or whatever? You know, are you going to be writing for more people? Um, you know, when can we expect a new project or anything? Yeah, I mean, I'm working on music. It'll be out whenever it's out. Um, and I, no hope, pressure. I hope you guys like it because I feel like it's very me. So if you don't like it, then you probably don't like me. No, I'm not going to say that. You like me. You love me. Stop it. <laughs> Cut it I out. mean, but what can they expect, though? Like, you know, um, what is me? Um, it's, I'm, I'm singing, like, I'm singing and rapping um, this, on songs. Um, live, like, uh, it's, like, it's, it's a little more live. Live some like, my, I mean, but on my album I had live instruments, so it's still more of that. Um, I don't know, it's cool. Like, it is cool. I know that. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't really know what to say. I'm not good at selling myself. It's like, <laughs> did somebody say same? <laughs> <laughs> Who said same? Hey, I know you. I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. Hey, you cute. 